Whew, my Facebook, just full of lighthearted chat. All right, strap yourselves in. Welcome to Rise With Wow, a show, my show, where we talk about everything that is light and fluffy. And this stuff too. Uh, today I said I would talk about things that I've seen on my Facebook, and wow, um, I picked the wrong day to really say that. So there's three major topics on my Facebook, all of which are just dandy. One is Black Lives Matter at Pride, the second is abortion, and the third is, luckily a happier note, which we'll end up on, is the Bell Let's Talk uh, fundraiser, which is great, by the way. It is great that a company that big is giving back. Okay, real quickly, let's talk about Black Lives Matter at Pride. Last year at Pride, Black Lives Matter stopped in the middle of the parade and had a list of demands. They had a manifesto, they had um, an agenda that they wanted to get through about equality and how Pride needed to be more inclusive to all members of the community from different racial backgrounds. Which makes sense. I mean, it makes some people uncomfortable, but protest makes people uncomfortable. That's all protests. So following that, Pride and Black Lives Matter met, they talked it out, they explained their size of the point, and as a result, uh, one of the big points being uh, the police presence at the parade. Um, and by presence, I don't mean like cops in general at the parade, I mean the police having actual floats in the parade. So they would have their own like special float and people can see them and they were part of the celebration. Uh, those will not be at Pride in 2017. And now you can see where the issue is. So I have friends on both sides of the issue. Uh, I have people that are very, very for this, uh, both in the anti-cop and pro Black Lives Matter uh, way of thinking. And I have people that are against it because they are, uh, they want to include everybody, inclusion is really big, and some people, sadly, are anti-Black Lives Matter. So, I'm not going to really dive too much into it, because this is a subject I could talk on by itself for a while, and I would rather talk about it with people in person, or if I was going to do it as a video, as an interview, but in general, I would like to say that I feel like both sides are not really being articulate with their point. See, you have a really legitimate claim from Black Lives Matter how they feel oppressed by a certain group of people and people don't really hear or understand that oppression. And so they're trying to explain it and how they feel when they see certain things. There's certain triggers. I feel people understand triggers if you had... Um, a previous um, traumatic incident with the color red and then your friends knew that, your friends would probably not show you the color red. That is such a general example, but you, I feel like when you hear it, you understand. I would love to hear your thoughts about it though. Um, have a nice, calm discussion in the comments. Eh, I'm sure that'll go well. I, I'm sure when people talk about it, they're just gonna be so articulate and cordial. The next topic that was really big is abortion. Um, that hot button topic. In the United States, President Trump uh, basically signed an order to defund Planned Parenthood. Now I can't really talk about this. I tried to talk about this earlier um, and then the video was getting very long. So I'm gonna try to sum this up really quickly. Defunding Planned Parenthood, the dollar amount itself, is not super significant the way the funding works. One, the funding didn't never, 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 never went towards abortions. That was illegal. It's been illegal since the 70s, I believe 76. You can fact check that for me. The second point really is the message that it actually sends though. Um, that I think is a little bit more important than the actual dollars to give you. So whether the government was giving $10 or $10 million, 
the message that your government doesn't have you, I think is really important because health is kind of a big deal. And Planned Parenthood does a lot more than abortions. Abortions only make up like 3% of what they do. And I saw a post about how 3% of what they do, it, like that's an inaccurate number um, because they deliver so many abortions and someone has a roundabout way of coming up with a number that was like 18%, which is grossly inaccurate. Planned Parenthood is great. They do uh, a big part of what they do is STDs and treatment and prevention, which is great. Uh, and birth control and contraception. Like those two items that I named for you is about over 75% of what they do. 9% of what they do is also cancer screening and treatment. So do your research on Planned Parenthood. And if you don't trust Planned Parenthood's website, talk to someone at Planned Parenthood. At the end of the day, uh, I think it's really weird that a bunch of men are making decisions about a bunch of women. Now, that's been happening for years, but at least in the room, could you put a bunch of men that are at least doctors and scientists and not career politicians and a real estate mogul? At the end of the day, I don't want a bunch of women making a decision on my penis. Um, so don't make a decision on things you don't understand. That's opinion. Love to hear. No, I actually don't want to love to hear your thoughts on that one. That one I'm pretty clear on. The last point is Bell Let's Talk. So today in Canada, Bell has a uh, campaign to destigmatize talking about mental illness, which I think is fantastic. It there's a hashtag hashtag Bell Let's Talk. And every time they see the hashtag, they will donate a dollar. I think it's a dollar. They'll donate money. Money that they will pay. It's good that people are sharing the hashtag so Bell has to pay money. I mean, some people that might be their motivation. But the thing that I think, the thing that I think is the most important, the thing that touches me, actually, is the fact that there's so many people talking about their personal experiences and other people that are making themselves open to others' experiences. This might be the day where people um, like start something for people. This might be the day that people see a friend that they, they really want to reach out to or didn't know they could reach out to this friend and it begins something. Some people might not talk today, some people might not talk next week, but you planted a seed that you're there and you're willing to listen. I know on my Facebook, uh, in the friends I've talked to throughout the years, that they know that I'm an open book. They can come and talk to me. Uh, I will talk to anybody out here. Uh, you can email me at yaoexperience at gmail.com. It'll be between you and I. But I think the most important thing is not so much Bell donating a bunch of money, which I think is great. I think the most important thing is we found a bunch of new people to talk to when we need to. And we found some people who have had an experience uh, that were hiding it and lived through it. Uh, we, yeah, you have people that have made it to the other side. And I think that message says we, if you're going through something like that and you see someone that has gone through that, that is awesome and you admire, that you can also make it as well. So those are the three big things on my Facebook. Um, I miss the days of memes and kittens and uh, opinions of the best rapper alive and whose album was better um, this year. Uh, I miss our happy-go-lucky. I miss our talks. You can follow me on Instagram at Yao Experience. You can email me at Yao Experience if you want to talk or you have something you want me to talk about, that'd be great. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Yao Experience. Yeah, it's just Yao Experience across the board. I should put something here or something. Thanks for watching, Rise Wow, and until next time, have a better one.